There's kind of a lot going on in this problem, so I'm going to draw a diagram. We have a picture of a door here. We're given the width of the door. I'm going to label that W. We're also given the height of the door. I'm going to call that H. And there are two hinges here. Both of them have the exact same distance from their closest edge of the door. I'm going to call that little d. And we're also told what coordinate system to use. The y-axis just points upwards, and the x-axis points outwards from the hinge side of the door. We're also given the mass of the door. The problem asks us to find, in unit vector notation, the formulas for the force that both hinges, the top hinge and the bottom hinge, exert on the door to keep it in place. So because they want it in unit vector notation, we'll want to find the forces from each hinge in the x direction, which will represent with the unit vector i, and the y direction, which will represent with the unit vector j. I'll start with the y direction, since that'll probably be the easiest. In fact, the problem gives us so much information that we don't even really need to have a free body diagram to figure out this part, because the problem explicitly tells us that each hinge supports half of the door's mass. Now, of course, I'm still going to draw a free body diagram anyways, and if we look at just the vertical forces, we can see that if the weight points downwards, it must be being held up by the hinges. So the hinges are applying some upward force from each of them, from both hinges. And if each hinge is supporting exactly half the mass, and half the weight as well, then the vertical force that each hinge is applying to the door is going to be half the weight, or mg divided by 2. And I'm making it positive because, as this diagram shows, those forces must be acting directly upwards, in the positive direction of the y-axis. The horizontal forces are going to be slightly trickier. We know that the hinges are going to be exerting a horizontal force on the door, each of them, and since they're both off-center from the door, each of them will be applying some torque to the door they'll have to consider. I'm going to start by looking at the torques on the top hinge, so I'll call it tau sub t, t for top. And the net torque must be equal to zero, since the door is not moving or rotating. I'm also going to define counterclockwise rotations to be positive. So treating the top hinge as our axis here, there are going to be two sources of torque. There's the torque from the bottom hinge pushing on the door, which, using my coordinate definition here, would be a positive rotation. And then there's also the weight of the door push it, pulling down on it, which is going to be a negative rotation. So let's show that in the equation. The positive rotation from the bottom hinge is going to be equal to the force that the bottom hinge is applying to the door. I'll call it F sub X, and the lever arm for this is going to be the distance from the top hinge to the bottom hinge, which is going to be the height of the door, H, minus these two Ds here that are separate and outside this range. So the lever arm that I'm going to multiply here is going to be H minus 2D. As for the negative component of the torque due to the weight, that's going to be the weight of the door, MG, times its lever arm, which is going to be half the width. So mg times w over 2, which we can rewrite as mg times w over 2 is equal to f sub x times h minus 2d. And this horizontal force, the force from the bottom hinge, that's one of the forces we want to find. So let's solve for f sub x by, sub by dividing both sides of that equation by h minus 2d. And now we have this horizontal force representing the force from the bottom hinge on the door. So if we were to put our numbers into a calculator for here, whatever this is would be what we'd use for the x component for the bottom hinge. Now we could use this exact same process using the, the sum of the torques for the bottom hinge to find the force that the top hinge is exerting on the door, and that would get us our answer for the horizontal force from the top hinge. But there is another way we could think about this to make this go a little quicker. This expression here is positive, which means that if we look back at our little diagram here, the bottom hinge is exerting a rightward force on the door, which right away tells us something, because since there are no other horizontal forces on the door, aside from the top hinge, then in order for the horizontal forces to be balanced, 
for the door to be in equilibrium, then the force on the top hinge must be in the opposite direction with an equal magnitude. Which means that logically we don't need to do any more math at all for uh, f sub x for the, the bottom hinge, for f sub x for the top hinge, it would just be the same as the negative of the one for the bottom hinge. And if you want, you can try it, and sure enough, if you use your torque summation and set that equal to zero for the forces acting about the bottom hinge, then you'll find this exact same expression, but negative. So they both have the same magnitude, but the top one pulls to the left, while the bottom one pushes on the door to the right. Now let's write down our final answers in unit vector notation. The force from the top hinge in the horizontal direction is this expression right here, except negative. So plugging this into our calculator, we find a force of about negative 80 newtons, and this is in the horizontal direction, so i hat. And then in the j direction, there's a positive horizontal force of the mg over 2. If you put that into our calculator, we find a force of about 1.3 times 10 to the power of 2 newtons, and that's in the j direction. The force from the bottom hinge is going to be very similar. As we discussed, the horizontal force is the same, but with an opposite uh, direction. So that's positive 80 newtons in the i direction. And the y direction shouldn't change, because both of them are pointing up with half of the door's weight. So positive 1.3 times 10 to the power of 2 newtons, again in the j direction. So these are our final two unit vector equations to answer this problem. And that is all for this video. If this video helped you out, please consider subscribing, as that'll help me to make more videos like this in the future. And if you have any questions, leave a comment down below, and I'll do my best to help you out. That's all for now, and I hope you have a lovely night. Goodbye.